Welcome back to Response EDH. As always, I'm your host, Albert, and I'm glad you can join us for another great Commander gameplay video. Today we have my buddy Shane, making his first appearance on the channel, and he's playing his life gain token deck, led by Ikra Shidiki and Prava of the Steel Legion. This deck wants to make a lot of tokens that can generate him mana and gum up the board until he can gain enough life to Aether Flux us or drain us for all our life. He starts off with Exploration, Corsair of Crufix, Fraile's Lana Wars Fury, Brushland, Command Beacon, a Forest, and a Swamp. Alec is back and he's also bringing a partner pair with Timna the Weaver and Singir the Dark Baron. This is also a life gain deck that aims to win through Aether Flux Reservoir but can also beat you down with a crew of big flyers. He keeps a starting hand with Brina the Demagogue, Mana Crypt, Felwar Stone, Sensei's Divining Top, Boreas Charger, a Swamp, and a Plains. Next we have Sam, and today he's playing a combo deck led by Extus Auric Overlord. Apparently he didn't get the memo he was supposed to bring a partner deck, but it is a double faced card so I guess it's close enough. He keeps an opening hand with Dark Ritual, Unearth, Burnt Offering, Dauntless Bodyguard, Ancient Tomb, Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth, and a Volta Champions. And of course, saving the best for last as always, there's me, and I'm playing my new 5 color Stranger Things deck, led by Mike and Eleven. This is a value deck that controls the board until I can take full advantage of Eleven's attack trigger to cast huge powerful spells to close out the game. I decide to keep an opening hand with Conflux, Sylvan Library, Adrix and Nev, Morphic Pool, Temple Garden, a Forest, and a Mountain. Before we get started, we would like to remind you, if you enjoy our content and would like to support the channel, consider becoming a patron. When you do, you're not only contributing to the channel's growth, but you're also being entered in our monthly giveaways, as well as receiving patron-only perks. All proceeds of our Patreon are reinvested back into the channel to bring you the best content possible. We would also like to thank our sponsor, Dragon Shield. Hit the link in the description of this video to check out the best product out there to protect your cardboard. You can also support the channel by using our affiliate link when purchasing product and singles at TCG Player. With that said, and the introductions out of the way, let's start the game. I'm gonna draw. As soon as I sit down. Fuck you guys. Play a forest. Exploration. Yeah, bro. Too fucking strong. Guys I'll play a swamp. Go ahead. Alec then draws for turn. Man, okay. What the fuck? I want out of this game already. <laughs> I, 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 I hate this game already. I didn't know he was doing that. Okay, that's not me. Yes, I saw. Wow. What the fuck, dude? And I'll pass. And he still has one mana. <laughs> Alright, we're done you know with what? this. I shit. have a turn one play also. Donald's yeah. bodyguard, yeah. go. <laughs> fuck you guys. This was this. You should have had me play Yogmoth, dude. Man, fuck all you guys. Here. Temple Garden. A good hand. Draw. Shane then draws and plays a Brushland. He then taps out, losing one life to cast Corsair of Crufix. He then reveals the top card of his library, finding a Maze of Ith, which he plays and gains one life from the Corsair. <laughs> Go ahead, asceticism. I'm gonna add top. Alec then starts his turn, rolling for the Mana Crypt and doesn't take any damage. He then draws for turn and plays the Snow Covered Plains. He then pays three to cast Boreas Charger. He does make a mistake here, thinking it's an ETB trigger and goes searching for two Plains cards. He does catch it later on in the game, so don't worry. Sam then draws and plays a Badlands. He then taps it for black and casts a Dark Ritual. He then uses the three black mana and a white to cast his commander, Extus Auric Overlord. I draw for turn and play a Command Tower as my land drop. I then tap both lands for a Sylvan Library and make a point to the table that I'm way behind already. Shane then draws and reveals a Swamp on the top of his library. Play swamp off the top, mm -hmm. gain life. Man yeah. <laughs> While this is going on, Alec finally realizes his mistake. Actually, it's LTV. Oh, he cheated! LTV. I didn't even notice that. Choose an opponent. It's LTV. So it has to leave play. I don't get this. Okay, I'm gonna play Freely. That's a game loss. <laughs> <laughs> That's an automatic game loss, I think. Shane then takes up Freely's and makes a 1 1 green elf druid. He then goes to combat and swings at Alec, who then blocks with the charger. When it dies, he now gets to search up four planes cards and puts a godless shrine onto the field tap. Thanks a lot, Shane. On his end step, Alec activates the top to look at the top three cards again and then goes to his turn. He again rolls for the crypt and avoids taking damage. Alec then draws for turn, 
he spends three mana to cast Brina the Demagogue. With the rest of his mana, he then casts his commander, Timna the Weaver. He follows that up by playing a Lotus Field, sacrificing his two basics as it enters. Sam then plays Urborg, Tomb of Yagmoth as his land drop. He then goes to combat. That actually works out, yeah, I'll attack you. I'm on a maze. Attack. The 2-4 double strike. You're not attacking me, but attack the planeswalker. No, we just block it. Okay, sure. He then draws a card from Brina's trigger, and Alec chooses to put two plus one plus one counters on Brina. Before he ends his turn, Sam casts a Dranith Magistrate and passes. I then untap and draw three cards from my Sylvan Library, choosing to keep two of them and losing four life. I then play a Morphic Pool and tap out to cast Dryad of the Elysian Grove, which allows me to drop another land onto the field. Shane then draws and reveals the top card of his library. He starts off by upticking Fraley's and makes another elf. He then cracks his command beacon to put Prava into his hand. Land destruction, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got him! After that, he pays four to cast Guardian Project. He then goes to combat and swings at Sam, who blocks with Extus. Brina will then trigger, drawing him a card, and Alec puts the counters on Timna. Alec again rolls for the Crypt Trigger, and this time loses, and takes 3 damage. Before his draw step, he activates his top to rearrange the top 3 cards of his library. He then draws for turn, and plays another Plains. He then pays 3 mana to cast Plague Engineer. What are Plague we doing? Plague Engineer on Elves. Plague Engineer on Elves. I don't know what that is. It minus all Elves go minus 1, minus 1. Why? Because that's what the card does. That's what the card does. That's what the card does. You can't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> he then pays three white mana for... Lua Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> After that, he moves to combat and swings Timna at me and Brina at Sam. He chooses to put the counters on Brina this time and draws a card. He gives Timna double strike with the Duelist Heritage, but I didn't hear it since we were ordering food and I only lose four life. While Sam loses five, Alec then gains eight life with Timna but pays two life with her ability to draw two more cards. Sam then starts his turn, dropping an Ancient Tomb on the field. He then taps forward to cast Pitiless Plunderer, losing two life from the Ancient Tomb doing so. He then goes to combat. Give me a double strike. Nah, fuck that. Nah, I don't even give a fuck about the double strike. I don't give a fuck. The Plunderer is going at your planeswalker. I don't give a fuck. And then the double strike Dauntless Bodyguard is coming at you. Cool. Double strike. Shane makes his point that Fraley's can get rid of some of the problems on the board and now can only get rid of one thing. Alec then puts two more counters on Brina and Sam gets to draw a card. I start my turn drawing three, but only keeping two, paying another four life. I then move to combat and swing my Dryad at Sam. Alec elects to give it double strike and Sam takes four and I draw a card. Alec then puts two more counters on Timna this time. I then shock in the steam vents to keep my life total nice and low to deter people from attacking me. I then tap out to cast Consecrated Sphinx. Shane then draws for turn, and I draw two cards with the Sphinx. He then taps three to cast his commander, Prava of the Steel Legion. When it enters, he draws a card with the Guardian Project, and I draw two more cards. He then ticks Fraley's down to target Alex Divining Top. In response, Alec activates it to look at the top three cards. He then taps it to put the top on top of his library and draws a card. My Sphinx lets me draw two more cards. After that, Shane goes to combat and swings at Sam with the Courser after Alec gives it double strike. Sam takes four damage and Shane draws a card. This will allow me to draw two more cards and Alec forgets to put two counters on a creature. Shane then plays the Canopy Vista off the top of his library and gains a life. He then reveals a Shalai Voice of Plenty on top of his library, but decides to shuffle it away with the Nature's Lord, grabbing a tap Scattered Groves and gains a life. He then reveals the top card of his library, and it's Tristani. Alec then starts his turn, winning the mana Crypt Roll, and then draws for turn, and I draw two more cards. He then taps two white mana to cast Grand Abolisher. After that, he taps five to cast Shadrick Silverquill. 
He then spends the remaining colorless from his mana crypt and a black to cast Pharesis on Brina. Oh, no, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so dead. <laughs> Sorry. Someone just insta dead right now. Going to combat here, I'm going to choose the modes. You draw a card and lose a life. Oh, I'll draw two. <laughs> and then I will put a pl two plus one counters on each creature. Oh, one plus one counters. One plus one counters. Oh, counter dear. Inkling and. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll attack you with Brina, Sam. Okay, I'm dead. You will get Timna, and you will, uh, Freylees will Stop, get Sam. No, 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 no. Freylees will get Plague Engineer. Brina will trigger, and Alec draws, which will let me draw two more. Shane then chooses to maze the Brina to save Sam's life. You want to save Sam? Yes. Activate it as an artifact. Because okay. I actually need another player around with answers. <laughs> I'm not attacking you, man. <laughs> Alec then puts two more counters on Timna, Look, he's drawn a lot of cards. I'm sure he has something, right? So, I don't have right? shit yet. So. And I'm forced to chump Timna or die to commander damage. Alec then gains nine life, and after that, he passes. Sam then draws and plays the Cabal Coffers, which he activates with the Ancient Tomb, losing two life to add five black mana. He then casts an Immortal Sun, and after that, he casts Burnt Offering, sacrificing the plunderer to add four red mana to his mana pool. The offering then returns the plunderer back to his hand, and he spends three of the red mana to cast Sneak Attack. He then spends the last red mana to sneak out a living lightning. I'll attack you with it. Okay, I'll three damage. Four. I won't give it a double strike. You're not gonna give it a double strike? No. Oh, no. Man. Worth a try, guys. <laughs> um, I'll end my turn. This dies, I'll get Burnt Offering. I start my turn, drawing three with the library. Fifteen. I'll fucking whatever. I'll take eight. Okay. We're gonna die to infect <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Tireless Provisioner. That's not a board you know, way. That's a good one. Burden Catacomb. Make a That's treasure. not a board way either. No, <laughs> uh, uh, crack this. Uh, get a swamp. Uh, get another treasure. Uh, crack two. Demonic Tutor. Ah. I then play a Reliquary Tower as my second land drop and make another treasure. I then tap it for red mana, thanks to the Dryad, for a Blasphemous Act. In response. Okay, I'll, I'll just sack this and make this indestructible. Okay. Cool. The Blasphemous Act then resolves and wipes the board. I then tap out to cast my commander, Eleven the Mage. With nothing else, I end my turn. Shane draws and just decides to tap out to cast Zendikar Resurgent. After that, he ends his turn. Alec rolls for the mana crypt, and this time loses three life. He then draws for turn, and taps one white mana to cast land tax. After that, he taps his lotus field for three black mana to help pay for a twilight profit. He then taps his crypt to cast lightning greaves, and immediately equips the profit. After that, he recasts his Sensei's Divining Top, and with nothing else, passes. Sam then starts his turn, drawing an additional card with the Immortal Sun, and plays a Command Beacon as his land drop. He then loses two life to activate the Coffers again for six black mana this time. Very. I'll use four of it to cast that. So I still have two left. Yeah, two left. I'll sneak attack Rebel Arc. Two. Yeah. Burnt offering it. Okay. Which will get these two back. To your hand. Oh, to play. To play. Yeah. To play. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll get red. And get this back. Oh, shit. This doesn't work, does it? <laughs> probably not. <laughs> Knowing you said, well, probably not. I'll use it, red. Yeah. Living lightning. I'll sneak it out. Yeah, and then you'll pass. Um, can, I, can I get double strike if I hit you? <laughs> if you hit him, I'll give a double strike. 
No, he saved. This he literally, he literally that. saved my my life. I Here, I'm, I'm just gonna hit you for four. It's just four, man, and 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 all this mana goes away. Look at that. Works out, right? You're gonna block? No. You're not gonna block? Are you sure? I'm good. I'll pass right now. I tried, guys. Okay, <laughs> this goes away. I'll get back burn offering. I then do the thing with the Sylvan Library again and choose to draw only one card this time. I then tap out to cast Conflux. Got nothing. And 11 is what again? You get to drop a card from your hand? Yeah, yeah when she attacks, yeah. If he has 11 more cards in his hand. I don't know if he has 11 more cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> he definitely does. <laughs> I've been counting. <laughs> Can you put the deal right now? Yeah, we're It's appropriate? Sure. Of course. Time yeah. sieve for black. Uh, you're getting after me? Uh, Runus ultimatum for white. Dockside for red. Parallel lives for green. So you just got infinite? Not yet. No. Right, he doesn't go infinite. You probably already have the last piece in your hand. After that, I go to combat and swing 11 at Shane. It's appropriate. Oh. You guys want to give me three turns? <laughs> Alec responds by activating his top again and chooses to put the top on top of his library. Yeah, I haven't said okay. anything yet. Money? Money. What would you take for money? My treasure? Dude, just I'll, give I'll, them I'll money. Give Don't be a just dumbass. Just <laughs> Jesus anyway. Christ. No, I, I, want, I want to hear his Why thought process. Why is he even a fucking thing? God damn it. Sam decides to fire off Burnt Offering to sack his commander before I have the chance to steal it. I then steal Shane's Zendikar Resurgent. Indecisive Sam changes his mind and puts Extus in the graveyard, and returns Revelark to his hand with the offering. I then steal Alex Duelist Heritage, and steal Sam's Pitiless Plunderer, but not before he remembers to make a treasure since his commander died. I then play a training center, and spend two mana to cast Dockside. In response, Sam cracks all his treasures to sneak out the Revelark. The Dockside Extortionist then makes me eight treasures. Um, this dies at the end of turn. I'll bring back Exodus and Dauntless Bodyguard. Okay. I then start my extra turn and play a Mana Crypt. I then tap three to cast Academy Manufacturer, drawing a card from the Zendikar Resurgent as it enters. After that, I cast Adrix and Nev and draw another card as I cast it. I then cast a Parallel Lives. After that, I spend two treasures to cast Time Sieve. I then go to combat and attack Shane again with 11, this time remembering to lose a life and draw a card. I then cast Ruinous Ultimatum with 11's attack trigger, and Sam chooses to sack the bodyguard to give the Magistrate Indestructible. I then sack five treasures and tap the Time Sieve to take an extra turn. I then show that I have Tamiel's Journal, which will make me plenty of sack fodder for the Time Sieve to take a bunch of turns until I can make enough artifacts to play Galazeth and a huge Exsanguinate to drain the table. Well, congratulations me for adding another win under my belt. This was a very explosive game. I think we all had a good showing, but 11 was just too fast for them this time. This deck is one of my newest builds and it has some quick finishes, and this one was no different, wrapping up in just 6 rotations around the table. Once I get up to 11 or more cards in hand and start attacking, it's only a matter of time before I cast my one-sided board wipes and start making tons of tokens and taking infinite turns. Shane had a very fast start, but was really stifled with the Plague Engineer shutting off Freilis' plus ability and then Sam attacking her so that he couldn't deal with Alex's board or my Sylvan Library. Despite all that, he was nice enough to save Sam, even though Sam did nothing to help the table. Sam was pretty close to comboing off, he had two of the pieces he needed with the Living Lightning and Burnt Offering, but he wasn't able to loop the Burnt Offering enough times to net him infinite mana, to eventually cast Awaken the Blood Demon a bunch of times and swing at us with a ton of hasty avatars. If you see anything he could have done differently, make sure to give him a piece of your mind in the comment section. He loves that. Alec was really an issue this game. He's a strong player and is a threat every time he sits at the table. It really looked like he was going to run away with the game. He had some really huge creatures and none of us had immediate answers for them. If it weren't for my Consecrated Sphinx finding me a Demonic Tutor to find the Blasphemous Act, this probably would have been another win for him. <laughs> Six. 
Oh no, what the hell? Oh, oh my god, 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 this needs to go on the stream, this needs to go on the stream, put this on YouTube, please, oh god, put this on YouTube, please, oh my god, do not edit any of that bullshit, that was great. <laughs> you complete. You broken my chain of thought, man. <laughs> just throws a fuck this. I'm done. <laughs> the cord for the iPad sits right here, and it's actually got. Albert's right drunk. Don't worry about him, man. <laughs> With power. Use the excuse. Use, <laughs> use the excuse, man. Take it. <laughs> if you enjoyed this game, consider stopping by our Twitch streams for Salty Tier Tuesdays every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and Fridays at 7 Pacific Standard Time for live Commander action. Make sure to like the video and leave a comment, and if you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Before we go, we'd like to give a big thank you to our amazing patrons. We are glad to have your support and thankful for each and every one of you. We here at In Response would like to thank you for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and make sure you follow us on our social medias. We also stream every Friday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome day.